I'm so sorry we're starting a bit late. Uh, the, the problem is Wilbur has got too many fans. <laughs> Uh, and, and that has been reflected in his book sales, which now are something in the region of 100 million copies. Um, he won't tell me exactly how many, but maybe he'll tell you. <laughs> so you, you had this extraordinary life where, where your mother was uh, encouraging you to read and your father was encouraging you to get outdoors and, and be a man of action. Yes, when you say our, our house was full of books, that's not true because mom had to hide her books, <laughs> which she and I enjoyed. But my old man believed that anything that didn't involve uh, plowing land or cutting down trees or building bridges over rivers or erecting uh, other buildings, he looked upon that as a waste of time. And um, so he, he didn't encourage my reading at all. In fact, I had to do most of my reading in, in the uh, outhouse, <laughs> which uh, and I hid the books under the, the uh, holder that kept the toilet paper in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, um, yes, reading wasn't easy with Dad around. But then once you were sent off to boarding school, people there encouraged your reading and your writing. Some of them did. Um, the, I, I was, was the only thing that I excelled at at school was writing essay and, and uh, English. And that's where I developed my real love for the English language and the use of it and, the, and uh, where I got a taste for words. And, and where did you go to school, remind me? I, I went to school, in, uh, first of all, in a place called Cord Wallace, which involved a four-day train journey from the ranch to get there and back again. And then I ended up at uh, Rhodes University. Yeah. Right. In, that's in, in South Africa? In South Africa, near Grahamstown, uh, close to the coast. So that, after the, and, and so far as I recall, the sort of boarding school experiences were pretty gruesome as they uh, often were in that period. They were, yes. A lot of cold showers, terrible food, <laughs> and, um, and the cane. The cane was constantly with us, and uh, I, some of our masters were really good with the cane. They used to chalk it <laughs> so that the first stripe on your bottom left a line, which was their aiming point, and they, they, uh, <laughs> they were very proud if they could lay the, the shots all on top of each other so you had a very nice bruise by the time they'd finished. Yeah. But, uh, yes, I remember when, when I told Dad, broke the news to him that I was going to be a journalist, he just looked at me and said, don't be a bloody fool, you'll starve to death. <laughs> and so uh, I, I went and took the, the accountancy. And I think that, that he did me a great favor because I, I believe that r journalism and creative writing are not easy bedfellows. They require different techniques. Mm, I think you're right. Uh, the, it's like uh, a tennis player and a squash player. You play the game with uh, with a racket and a ball, but the technique is different. Mm. And so he did me a big favor there. And also, when studying accountancy, I learned how to read a balance sheet and all those things, which later on became quite important. <laughs> <laughs> but having said that, you know, I worked for the for the income tax department. And as it stands now, I'm still working for the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> as are we all. Um, and, uh, but you managed to store up. Um, you wrote your first book while you were still working for them, is that right? And then stored yes. up enough time to. to yes, write I, the I next always time. say I wrote my first book on Her Majesty's stationery um, mm. on Her Majesty's time because I, <laughs> I used to have a little office of, of my own. And uh, th there was no lock on the door, but I used to put a chair there and, uh, <laughs> and then get on with the serious business of writing the book. <laughs>